I saw this movie opening day over 8 years ago in 2016. I was a 25 year old man a bit old for kids movie, but my date wanted to see the movie. It's better than I expected beating heart of this extremely likable adaptation of Roald Dahl's family favorite, which also owes a debt to the illustrations of Quentin Blake. Bring for the anarchic magic so sorely missing from Spielberg's ill-fated Peter Pan. Project, Hook, the BFG sees the director rediscovering his inner child in winning fashion. Like the ponomous figure, the result may be a little lumbering at times, but it is also ultimately irresistible. We open in a Mary Poppins-style version of London where past and present seem to intermingle. From vistas of the Thames and the Houses of Parliament we move through Dickensian cobbled streets to the orphanage where young Sophie, Barnhill, peers like a giant into the tiny rooms of a doll's house. It's the witching hour, and Spielberg and shafts of dusty moonlight stream through the room, the silver blade of doll's source, when Sophie herself will soon be taken to giant country, where beasts with names like Blood Butler and Flesh and Peter are hungry for human beings. At the palace, B. BFG introduces the queen to whiz popping, the bottom birthing sign of true happiness but Sophie is safe with a BFG bridge of spy star relance is big friendly giant, a loner with sad eyes and expressive ears who catches and bottles dreams, but who was plagued by a guilty secret. Bullied by his larger and altogether more aggressive brethren, this towering yet timid creature needs to stand up for himself, a lesson he may yet learn from his tiny companion. In return, he will teach her to hear all the secret whisperings of the world and introduce her to his land of dreams, a magical place with all the like glowing trees and northern light skies. Based on a screenplay by the late Melissa Matheson, who most famously wrote E.T., the BFG has something of the enchanted tone of Spielberg's extraterrestrial gem, along with a sly visual nod to the finger-touch image that became its iconic emblem. There's a touch of Parko Thieves Peter and a wolf to him John Williams' storytelling scholar, helping to delineate the unruly lines of the narrative, shepherd in the audience through emotional peaks and troughs like dancers in a ballet. Loading video watch a trailer for the BFG of Perdal's novel, the BFG speech patterns are a little squiggly, with his talk of hippie dumplings and telly-telly bunkum boxes pitched somewhere between the delicious kibbedegook of Stanley Onwin and the nets of futuristic of Anthony Burgess's A Clockwork Orange. It's all music to Relance's ears and he makes the dialogue sing, a gentle burst sanding the sharp edges off the contrary consonants, lending a lyrical little to the giant stream of consciousness ramblings. Barnhill embodies a crucial combination of innocence and strength. She has the same self-possessed quality of amazement and joy that Mara Wilson brought to Danny DeVito's Matilda, still my favorite screen adaptation of Dahl's children's books, although I remain fond of Nick Rhodes' The Witches, and indeed of Brian Cosgrove's celebrated 1989 animation of the BFG. At large in the BFG's lair, Sophie discovers an Aladdin's Cave of Wonders, a Gilliam's world of heat robins and pulleys and dreams and labeled jaws that shine like Tinkerbell, throwing orange, green, purple and blue light around the room. Magnificent. Penelope Wilton as the Queen. Magnificent. Penelope Wilton as the Queen. Photograph. All-Star Slash Walt Disney vehicular roller skidding and helicopter attacks provide some swoopy action sequences, while a set piece at Buckingham Palace is a pure delight, with a BFG feasting on a scrunded limpious breakfast served up on a giant table constructed from grandfather clocks and grand pianos. It's here that the BFG introduces the Queen, a magnificent Penelope Wilton, to the majesty of whiz popping, the bottom birthing sign of true happiness brought on by the downward spiraling bubbles of his favorite fizzy drink, Fobscottle. I haven't laughed at fall jokes so much since Blazing Saddles. Such physical bodiness is indicative of the BFG's cinematic corporeality. It's significant that two of the most adventurous screen adaptations of Dahl's work, Henry Selleck's James and the Giant Peach and Wes Anderson's fantastic M.R. Fox, both used stop-motion animation to capture the tactile worlds the author conjure with such vigor in his books. The danger with computer graphics, as Spielberg learned in The Adventures of Tintin, is that they can create layers of shiny artifice that, while dazzling, lack heft, both physical and emotional. Yet for all its digital wizardry, the BFG remains a flesh-and-blood film, a story of two living, breathing, 